friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And yes, I'm filming my garden update out in the greenhouse again because there's still a lot of noise going on out there. You just have to understand between working between all the different rain showers and Patrick doing most of the work all by himself and this being his first time laying metal roofing, it's, you know, it's a learning process, so it's all taken a while. So a lot of noise going on, but it's a beautiful day. And so now's the time to shoot the garden video as well as Patrick getting out there and working on the roof. I did go ahead and run around the yard and take a few little clips and hopefully I'll remember to mention everything I show here. But I do start with the deck garden and you can see, you know, my grapevines are coming along. Uh, the blueberries are finishing up. The robins have been have found my blueberries now and I don't have enough netting to go around them but at least I got most of them picked. I still try to get that out there and get as many as I can before the robins <laughs> eat them all. But anyway the deck garden is just looking beautiful. This is a time of year I really love it and uh, love hanging out on there but I don't have a lot of time to hang out there because I'm always so busy. And uh, then walking out into the main garden, you can see my corn is really coming along. My marshmallows are tall and they're blooming. My echinacea, at least one of my echinaceas, is blooming and it's got color on it. The other ones are starting to open up and soon we'll have color on them. I've actually pulled up a lot, even though you can see a lot of boards still in the garden, I've pulled up probably half of it. I've uh, cleaned out a few areas, one area in particular in order to allow I transplanted some of the amaranth like I did out front as well as some uh, chicory which is probably I don't think it's going to get very far this year because I started it very late in the year and some milkweed and then also some bee balm in a few different places. Uh, you can see my anise hyssop is looking really good. It's blooming this year. I haven't been harvesting much of it off of it. I've been wanting to just let it really get established so that uh, next year it can come back even bigger and I can really start harvesting it. But I do take a little bit every now and then to make some tea because boy does it make some delicious tea. And eventually I'll do a video on the anise hyssop so I can talk about the benefits of that. Uh, my beans and peas are doing great. I've just started harvesting the beans themselves yesterday. The peas have been coming in like crazy. So I've been getting a lot of those. I've been dehydrating them. I've been using them as stir fries and salads and uh, just trying to use them up as many ways as I can. And uh, as you can see, I, I, somewhere here I did a close-up of the uh, Sunset Runner beans. Those are the Sunset Runner beans and the Scarlet Runner beans are virtually the same beans. They just have a different color. The bean inside themselves, uh, once it's uh, once it's matured, has a slightly different color to it, a same pattern. I can tell the difference when I see them side by side, which one is which. And then the flowers have a different color. And I grow them both simply for the sake of having the different colors. And I just, I'm loving the runner beans. I have the purple potted pole beans. Uh, they're not showing any beans yet, but they're a beautiful plant. They have a darker leaf and they have a beautiful purple flower so I like growing those for those and then the beans themselves are dark purple until you cook them and then they turn dark green the the squash is finally coming along finally really starting to grow because the weather's finally warmed up enough for it to do that and it looks like I might get some I hope uh as the summer progresses, especially August, is that's typically when the squash really does best. I think part of the, my issue with squash and beets and things like that is I always plant them a little too early. I need to probably wait until the beginning of June to plant the squash, the beets, the carrots, things like that. And I just didn't even bother with carrots this year. But the beets, uh, a lot of them didn't make it from the first planting. I tried planting again. I finally have some growing and they're doing good. They're out in the front garden. So I'll show you right here the front garden the zucchini this is where my zucchini plants are they I just a couple days ago started harvesting that doing great in fact I just shot a video on preserving zucchini and the many different uses and so you should see that this next week all of my tomatillo plants both in the back and in the front have all been self-seeded except for four plants that are out by the beans that are purple tomatillos that I wanted to try that Jen had sent me up the seed. So everything else when it comes to the tomatillos is self-seeded. And so I just, a lot of them, I just let them do their thing. You can see the out front there, the transplanted sorghum and the transplanted 
Amaranth is really doing good f from last time when you saw me transplant it, doing real good coming along. And uh, then you can see here as I walk along, you should be able to see the uh, the kohlrabi, I keep forgetting to mention, my first time trying that this year. And again, very slow, but now starting to really take off. I've had to keep transplanting it, moving it around. And then I've got the big beets. I've got some smaller beets you can't even probably see in the video. My herbs are looking great out there. And there's so many other things. I know I'm forgetting some stuff. And then along the little strip of herb garden, you can see the marshmallows there are blooming. Uh, the thyme is doing great. I am planning on taking a couple of those marshmallow plants out at the end of this year and harvesting the roots. And then I think I'm just going to keep only a couple of marshmallow plants out there and keep that whole bed area mostly for bee balm and various other herbs. The echinacea, I've got an echinacea growing out there, but it's kind of struggling because the marshmallows are shading it out. And then when you go around to the west side herb garden, you can see I got an echinacea that I planted in there last year from seed that I saved from the previous year and it's doing good it's going to start you can start seeing color on that soon again my elderberries are just just really heavy with flowers and I still haven't harvested any I just can't bring myself to do it because I really want to get a lot of berries this year maybe next year maybe I'll wait till next year and then harvest the elder flowers because they they're really good for you too and then out here in the greenhouse Renaissance, I've been picking quite a few off of here I've been very very happy with these wonderful flavor these ones aren't ripe yet but i just picked a bunch yesterday i've got a picture i'll show you right here where i was picking the the green beans from the garden as and the uh these tomatoes they're the first ones to get ripe and it seems to be the that's just the way they are and then the second ones are the the black brandy wines this one's about ready i picked one yesterday and it could should have sat for one more day but it was pretty good i would say i like the flavor so far of the vernissage is better than the black brandy wine but the black brandy wine is a good, um, brandy wine tomatoes are just a good tomato anyway. And I find, I think this one would be really great for making a sauce. And then over here, the peach melons are still, I still don't see any female flowers, but I am seeing female flowers on my lemon cucumber now. So that's great. And hopefully this is getting pollinated. I've got bees flying all around in here. So sometimes I'll come out here and pollinate by hand just to make sure, but uh the bees seem to be doing a pretty good job like they have been for the green, the tender green burpless. This is a this is a young one, but I did pick three mature ones yesterday. And then uh, last week I picked a mature one, the first one to get ripe and ate it and it was delicious. So I think this, this one for sure is going to be a winner because it's been the first to produce, has been doing the best. Even though it's back in the darkest corner of the greenhouse, it seems to be doing well. Usually if I try to plant anything back here, it doesn't do super great, but this one's doing pretty good. And then here are the, the Casaluto Genovese. This is just a wonderful, delicious Italian tomato that will turn a beautiful, brilliant red. And uh, it doesn't get very big. It, doesn't, it won't get much bigger than this, but it will be very wrinkled like this and just amazing flavor. These have, uh, this is my third year growing them. Now these were ones from saved seed from a plant I bought from the homesteading fair from 2018. Uh, the local one that we went, well, it's not local, it's three hours away from us, but anyway, in Rochester there. The one that we spoke at this year, well, we went to it last year and I picked up a plant from one of the vendors because I w decided I wanted to try it again. And because the first time I tried it, it just didn't do great for me. I don't even remember if I even got tomatoes, any ripe ones. But last year I got some ripe ones and I loved them. And so then I saved the seeds and these are doing better than the one before. And I I'm sure it's because it's more acclimated. So I'm getting a lot more tomatoes. Anyway, uh, as far as just a eating tomato and adding to salads, this is one I definitely recommend. Just the flavor is intense and wonderful. And another great one for salads is the black Japanese. No ripe ones yet. So this one here is a pretty decent size for a black Japanese. They um, they typically get just don't quite get that big. But anyway, they, they turn out a real beautiful color. I'll put a picture of the ones I grew last year. And uh, anyway, another real good one for just eating and adding to salads. And then of course you've got your Romas. No white ripe ones here, but Romas are great for, for sauces. Really great for making sauces. These are the Rio Grandes. 
I was trying to grow, I was growing the Amish paste tomatoes and they did so-so, but they never did super great for me. These Rio Grande seem to be doing the best and I like the smaller size of the plant. Now coming over here to my pepper shelf, I made an interesting discovery. Here's the ashwagandha, here's the grapefruit, and look here. I just now noticed this. This is a new discovery too. It's getting a flower on it. This is that grapefruit that we just found a seed sprouting in a grapefruit we bought from the store, so we planted it. We I, There was two actually, and the other one's in the house. So I just realized that this, I have three mystery pepper plants because I'd started several different peppers and some of them never, I thought they were never going to germinate, so I gave up and just used the pots to plant other seed, to start other seed in. Then I saw peppers finally coming up, and this was one of them. Well, I figured out this was the jalapeno I planted, and never, and I got one jalapeno out of it. Um, the, uh, let's see, what's this back? This is a Marconi. I don't have, oh, I do have a pepper on that one, but it's not doing as good as these other Marconis. So the Chinese five color, still no new colors on it. But here's my new discovery. This was one of the mystery peppers, as is this, and you can tell they're the same. I don't remember. I'm going to have to go look at my seed packs because I don't remember what this is. What was the other pepper that I was going to try? Obviously, this is not a jalapeno. It's not a Chinese five color. Besides, the Chinese five color tend to grow up, <laughs> point upwards instead of downwards like most peppers. And uh, anyway, I'll have to go look it up. Some of you might recognize it right away and be able to tell me. This is uh, some Marconis here. These will, the Marconis will get pretty good size. They get long and skinny. They're a sweet pepper. They're the only pepper I'm growing that's not a hot pepper. And uh, they are a sweet pepper. They're really good. I got the seeds from Jen. And these sweet peppers here grow better for me than Marconis. These will turn red than in any bell pepper I've tried. Um, I always have failed with the bell peppers. And then here's those jalapenos. Ellen's jalapenos is what I'm calling them. So some of you have heard the story many times, so I'll say it again in case you're new. Ellen Fisher, one of my longtime subscribers from the very beginning, had sent me a big jar of uh, dehydrated peppers from her own garden. And I was, you know, adding them to dip various things, even use them to make my plum hot sauce, at which I'll link to the video up there in the corner. Well, I decided just on a whim to take, because I was like, wow, there's a lot of seeds at the bottom of the jar. So I decided to take some of the seeds and plant them and see what happened. And sure enough, I got plants. They were actually the first ones to germinate, first ones to really start growing, and the first ones to start bearing fruit. And I've actually used a few peppers off here already. Okay, well, that's my garden update for this week. One thing I like about doing it this way is you're going to get a lot more steady picture when I'm panning. But without me talking and then me trying to remember everything that I videotaped, I'm not going to remember everything to say, uh, everything that I show, because I have to be able to see it. And even when I see it, I forget to talk about it. So if you see something in there, in the video clips, you see something, you have any questions, ask your questions below. I'll be happy to answer them because I'm always happy to talk about my garden. I just don't remember everything that's out there because I have a lot of stuff growing. If you're new, though, we did buy that uh, one acre piece just a, a half mile up the road there. Where we are doing all this right here is all on just a in a neighborhood on a one third acre corner lot. And we're growing all this stuff. I already got over 100 pounds of potatoes. I've got lots of beans and peas coming in. And then the tomatoes are starting to come in. I get tons of tomatillos every year and squash does fairly decently. In fact, I still have pumpkin from, I think, 2000. 13 or 14, whenever it was, I grew a lot of pumpkin and I froze it up. I still have a bunch of that left. So, and that's, that's in the freezer. But anyway, so just so you know, I mean, if I know one lady, Halo, she just got a, a 0.59 acre piece. And I tell you, there's a lot you can do on a 0.59 acre piece. That's twice what we have here. And if I can do all this here, then she can do twice as much. And we do have chickens. I Since I'm not taking the camera out there, you won't hear the chickens like you did in one of my other garden updates where Claire was being obnoxious. But anyway, we have 10 chickens right now. So we do that here too. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed my garden update for this week. And hopefully I'll get another one out next week and we'll see a little more production on that squash then. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.